Hello and welcome to week four of Advent, the fourth Sunday of Advent. I can hardly believe it. And do you know what that means? It means we're really nearly, very nearly ready to celebrate Christmas. Now, if you've got an Advent calendar at home or if you've been lighting an Advent candle, you might have noticed that there's not very many days left before Christmas Day. And we celebrate Jesus being born and coming into the earth, coming into the world to bring a light and light up the darkness. So there's not much time. We best finish off our Jesse tree that we've been building all through Advent. Now this week, we're going to be thinking about trust. I wonder if you've heard that word before, trust. Do you trust somebody? Hmm. Do you believe what they're going to, what they say, that what they say is true? Do you trust that they'll look after you? I wonder who you trust. Now recently, at Junior Church, we played a game all about trust. You had to wear a blindfold. And then while you were wearing your blindfold, you had to try and walk through a difficult path filled with obstacles. And you had to try and make it all the way through without crashing into any obstacles, without falling over, without getting lost, and see if you could make it to the end. But the thing is, you weren't on your own. There was somebody with you and they were telling you the way to go. They were telling you when to turn, when to move out the way, how to avoid the obstacle course, uh, the obstacles in your course and how to get all the way to the end. But you needed to trust them. You needed to trust that what you could hear and what they were telling you was true and that they were gonna help you get all the way through. It's not always easy to trust, especially when something unexpected happens and we're not sure and we can't see what's going to happen or how things are going to turn out. But if you've got someone that you trust with you, someone who says, I'm going to be with you, I'm going to help you through this, it's going to be okay. And if you trust them and you believe that, then you don't need to be scared or worried because you know that you're not on your own even when things are unexpected, even when things are difficult. And that's exactly what happened to Mary and Joseph. And it's also what happened with some of the other people we've been thinking about. In the first week we were thinking all about the patriarchs and matriarchs, the people in the Old Testament of the Bible who trusted God's promises and waited and waited for them to come true. And then we thought about Moses and the prophets who were really brave in speaking up for what they believed, in sharing God's message with the people, even when it was a bit difficult or a bit scary. And do you know what helped them to be brave? They knew that God would be with them they weren't doing it on their own and they trusted God and so they could be brave and that's just like what we're going to hear about today. Mm -hmm. All about trust. You might want to try this game at home if you've got a blindfold or you could do it maybe with a scarf. See if you've got someone at home with you who you trust. What happens if you set up an obstacle course? and see if they can help lead you through it. Maybe you can help lead them through and they will need to trust you too. Give it a go, but be very careful. Make sure you've got someone with you. Don't try and just go without being able to see. I think it will be quite fun. Let me know how you get on. Okay, so it's time to add the final decorations to our Jesse tree. And the first person that we're going to be thinking about today is John, John the Baptist. Did you know that John was Jesus's cousin? He was just a little bit older than Jesus. And he, well, he actually did some quite strange things. 
So he used to dress a little bit unusually and he lived out in the wilderness, in the desert, and he used to eat locusts and honey. And people thought, hmm, that's a bit unusual. But John would tell all the people to turn around in their lives, to turn around in their hearts and turn back towards God, to turn away from all of their selfish ways, all of the things that they did that they shouldn't be doing, but to turn back to God. And he baptised them, that's why he's called John the Baptist. He baptised them in water and they went all the way down under the water and all the way back up again. And God forgave them of their sins. So he was telling all the people and lots and lots of people, the crowds would come to listen to him, to tell them, turn away from your own selfish lives and remember God. And he told them all about Jesus coming. And then do you know what happened? Jesus came to John to be baptised. And as soon as John saw him, he recognised him. And he said, it's you, you're the one we've been waiting for. And Jesus said, I've come to be baptised. And John said, no, 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 no. You should be baptising me, not me. You're the one we've been waiting for. And Jesus said, no, you, John, will baptise me. And he did. And he got Jesus to go all the way down underneath the water in the river and then, oh, come back up again and then the clouds opened and down came a dove to sit on Jesus' shoulder and there was a voice that said this is my son I am so proud of him wow isn't that amazing so the first person that we're remembering is John and I've made a decoration of a dove to remember when the dove came when John baptised Jesus. Pop that dove up here. Just. Next we're going to think about Mary, who did just what God asked her even though it was really difficult. One day when she was at home, an angel appeared with a special message for her and said, Mary, Mary, you're going to have a baby and it's gonna be God's baby. She was not expecting that. She was quite surprised and a bit worried. What does this mean? How could this be for me? How could this be true? But the angel said, do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you and he has a special plan for you. You are going to have a baby and call him Jesus and he is going to be the Messiah, the one we've been waiting for. And Mary trusted what the angel said and trusted that God had a special plan for her and she had baby Jesus and she loved and looked after him for his whole life and she was even there right at the very end of his life when he died on the cross. Wow. I've made a flower for my decoration to represent Mary and I'm going to find a space to hang it on the tree. Next we're going to think about Joseph. Joseph who was engaged to be married to Mary and he wasn't very pleased when he heard that Mary was expecting a baby, he was quite surprised about it, but he didn't want to make a fuss, so he thought he would just quietly leave Mary. But then an angel came to him in a dream and told him, Joseph, you must trust Mary, trust God, for Mary is going to have God's baby, the one we've all been waiting for. And God has a very special plan for you. And so Joseph did just what the angel had said. And he married Mary. And he loved and he looked after Jesus all of his life. And Joseph was a carpenter. So I have made a decoration shaped like a saw. I'm going to 
going to hang it on the tree as we remember Joseph. Joseph, who was Jesus' earthly father. Next, we remember Jesus. Jesus, who came to earth and gave us the opportunity to be a part of God's family. Jesus, who was born like a tiny baby, in, laid in a manger because there was no space for him to have a bed in a very quiet and unexpected way he came God's son into the world to be the light of the world and to light up all the darkness that is something worth celebrating so I have created a decoration of Jesus lying in a manger I'm going to add it to the tree Lastly, we're going to think about ourselves. We can add a star to the tree to show that we're also part of Jesus' family. And our family and our friends. You could add lots of stars if you like. I chose a star because I think sometimes family and friends are a bit like stars. Even when we can't see them, we know that they're still there shining. So you might want to make your own star decoration. You might want to make one for someone in your family or your friends. You could fill the whole tree with stars if you like. I'm going to hang mine on the tree now. Let's pray together. God of change. Thank you for John the Baptist, who called people to change their lives and get ready for Jesus. God of forgiveness, help us to change our lives and to be ready for when Jesus comes. Come, Lord Jesus, come. God of the humble, thank you for Mary and Joseph, who did just what you asked and welcomed Jesus into their home. God of joy, help us to make space for Jesus in our lives. Come, Lord Jesus, come. God of love, thank you for sending your son to live here with us, to invite us to be part of your family. God of family, help us to remember how special we are to you and to know that even when we are not together with those that we love, we are always together as part of your family. Thank you, God. Amen. Our feet started tapping, our hands started clapping, our bodies started dancing before the Lord. Our feet started tapping, our started clapping, our bodies started dancing before the Lord. Come on and dance with joy in your heart. Come on and dance with joy in your heart. Come on and dance with joy in your heart. Everybody's dancing for the Lord. Tapping, our hands started clapping, our bodies started dancing before the Lord. Our feet started tapping, our hands started clapping, our bodies started dancing. It's your love that helps me grow. 